Good morning and welcome to Warfare Wednesday. Welcome to our replay viewers. Thank y'all for catching us when you can. Um, it's Warfare Wednesday. I hope everyone has had a great uh, weekend and start to their week. And for those of us that live in the South, I hope you've enjoyed your snow day yesterday. <laughs> Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning. Um, <coughs> excuse me, yesterday was... Um, an eventful day at my little house. Anna Grace had her wisdom teeth out, which she did great. She um, hadn't talked to her this morning, so I'm hoping she slept well last night. Good morning, Emily. Um, so I'm hoping she slept well. But um, it was fun. We had fun playing with her all the way home yesterday. So, but by the time we were home, she was kind of back to her normal self. So, but anyway, um, my weekend was kind of crazy I'm gonna go ahead and just say this and get this out here because people are gonna be asking because I know y'all been watching but um, we had planned on moving we were supposed to be moving this week February the 1st around February the 1st was supposed to be our moving time but we're not moving now um, homeowners changed their minds so anyway now I get to unpack all the boxes that I had packed so that's what I've been doing this week good morning Shannon so but it's all good um, a couple of quick announcements while we are waiting for a few more people to hop on. Don't forget about your secret sisters. Um, January is almost over, so be sure and send her a card. I, I'm praying for you kind of thing. So um, be sure and get that message out to your secret sisters. And, and on an exciting note, I was looking um, back the other day. I, I journal and keep little, cal uh, little, anyway, I keep calendars and I write down a lot of things of when things happen and um, February the 6th yeah the little red house story Emily <laughs> February the 6th Emily you're gonna be surprised when you hear this February the 6th is the two-year birthday of um, brave and beautiful mamas can you believe that that we've been going at this thing for two years now oh my word two years February the 6th, so in honor of the birthday, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway and just watch the group and you'll see how to, how to be in and for the giveaway. So I just couldn't believe it. We've been doing this for two years now. <laughs> so, but anyway, but without further ado, let me get into this, um, let me get into this uh, today because I, I've had people ask me this before, literally like, how do you hear God's voice? So that's what I wanted to talk to you about. And um, I don't know, a couple of months ago when I put up the little poll, like what are some things that you like to hear about? I think this was may have been one of them. So I've kind of had this like stacked away in my, in my thought processes. So um, it's also your birthday. So you won't forget that, Emily. How about that? All right. So we'll have a double, double celebration. We'll celebrate Emily and Brave and Beautiful Mamas. <laughs> but um Anyway, so how do we hear God's voice? So that's what I wanted to share with you this morning. Is people have like straight up just asked me, how do you know? How do you know that it's God speaking to you? And then how do you know when you know that you know that you heard God, but then it doesn't um, turn out like you thought it was going to turn out? So um, that's kind of what I wanted to share today about. But we still, we serve a God who still speaks to his children, y'all. There are some people that believe that God no longer speaks, that the only way he speaks is by what is written in the Bible. And yes, he does speak through the word. Good morning, Helena. Um, but God still speaks to his children, y'all. He is still a communicating father. I mean, um, this, listen to this. This is a, a from this man, his name is Dallas Willard, and he wrote the book, Hearing God, and this is a quote from him. It says, if God doesn't speak today, then the greatest disservice we could ever do to people is tell them that they could have a personal relationship with God. So why would you tell somebody they could have a personal relationship with God, but God doesn't speak? Why would you tell somebody that? So, I mean, that'd be like you um, with your spouse or your children, like never speaking or never communicating with them. Like, what kind of relationship would that would be if you never communicated with your children, if you never communicated with your spouse? So communication is a huge part. Good morning, Cherie. Communication is a huge part of your relationship. And it's not just a one way. If, okay, and women, we are so guilty of this. When your husband's come home from work, you wanna just spout out blah, 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 blah all 25,000 words that you have in about 10 minutes. 
and they'll speak maybe 10 words back to you. I think we do that with God sometimes. We're just, we're so busy talking to him, we don't get still enough, long enough to hear what he has to say back. So um, I think we do that to God a lot. So let's just go straight to the word and start with John chapter 10, verses three through seven. And it says, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. Those who heard Jesus use this illustration didn't understand what he meant. So he explained it to them. I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. So just like the sheep know the voice of the shepherd, God is our shepherd. He's the gatekeeper. So we know his voice, just like with our own children, y'all. Um, your children know your voice. I mean, they will tune you out in a heartbeat. Um, oh my goodness, somebody's house is on fire. I can't see all of it, Ashley, but we will definitely pray for whoever's house is on fire, y'all. Pray for. We'll make sure we pray for them. Um, but I can't see who it is because Facebook only allows me to see so much. So we'll definitely pray for whoever's house that is. Um, but just like with our kids, y'all, they know our voice. Like in a room full of kids, if you walk in, you don't even have to say their name. You can just start talking and they'll hear your voice and they'll look and they're like, oh, that was my mama's voice. Or, oh, that was my daddy's voice. So our kids know our voices. Why do they know our voices? Because we've spent time with them and, and they have spent time with us. It's the same way with God. We know his voice because we spend time with him. But some of the, I'm gonna give you three reasons we don't hear God. Um, oh, Michelle Barrett's brother, Ben, is that who it is, y'all? Okay. Missy, is Ben's house on fire? She just hopped on. I was waiting to see if she was gonna um, respond. Okay. Oh my word, y'all. We really, we will pray for Ben and Leon, uh, Leanne. Leanne is one of our very active members here on Brave and Beautiful Mamas, so that just breaks my heart. So we will definitely lift them up in prayer this morning, and um, we will keep y'all posted here in the group as to what's going on and how we can um, help them and just pray for them right now. So they are okay, but thank God they've lost everything. Okay. We'll definitely keep them in prayer. Um, let's just stop right now. Father God, we just come to you this morning, and Lord, it's such a tragedy for this family, Lord, that have lost everything, but Lord, they are okay, and we thank you that they are okay, Lord. We thank you that their family is okay, that their child is okay, Lord, and Lord, in the middle of this loss, Lord, I just ask that you would just receive so much glory from it, that you would just outdo yourself and just let um, your love just shine forth to them and just give them the strength and the peace that they need as they walk through this time, Lord, and just be with them, Father. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so um, we will continue to keep y'all updated. Missy, keep us updated, and um, I'll chat with you afterwards and see what we can do to help out. But um, so back to hearing God's voice. Um, there are things that get in the way, and I'm going to call these um, weapons of mass distraction. I'm going to give us three things that are distractions that cause us not to hear God's voice. And the first thing is busyness, y'all. Um, Luke 10, verses 39 and 41, that's the story of Mary and Martha. Um, and we, let me see if I can flip to that real quick. Yeah, 39 and 41, it says, um, we know the story here, but it says, her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by a big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all the details. How many of us are always worried about details? Hmm. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Martha has discovered it and it will not be taken from her. Y'all, busyness is one of the weapons that gets in our way is we are so busy we we don't even make time for God because we are we're just busy we're just busy doing this we're busy doing that we're just busy 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 bodies so 
Um, in order to hear God's voice, we have to get still, y'all. You have to be quiet. Um, Psalm 46, 10, it says, Be still and know that I am God. So in all of our busyness, we've got to learn to be still. When we're trying to, to talk to our kids and you know have a conversation with them, I have to tell mine sometimes, sit down, look me in my face. So I think sometimes we need to do that with God. We need to sit down and look him in his face and quit being so busy. And then um, the quieter we become, the more that we can hear. And we know that in, just in general, when we get quiet, you can hear more. So we just need to be about, um, stop being about such busyness and, and learn how to be still and be quiet and just listen. And the next thing, um, the next weapon is competing voices. And we need to restrict those things that are competing with God. And you're like, I don't have anything in my life competing with God. Yes, we do. We have so many voices that are competing with God. Our kids, their sports, their extracurricular activities, social media, social media. We spend more time on social media than we do praying, than we do reading the Word. I know we do. What about... Netflix, binge watching all those crazy shows. I mean, social media is fine. Netflix is fine. But we just have to, to keep ourselves in check for all those competing voices. And y'all, if you have more than one kid and they're involved in sports, you will run yourself ragged, whether it's sports, dance, and those things are great. But when, but when we're putting so much time, energy, money, effort, so we're just ran ragged. Sometimes we just need to have, we have to scale back and we have to teach our kids to scale back. Also, if we don't teach them now, they're gonna think that life should just be lived wide open, ripping and running all the time. So um, we have to strip off the things of this world that are weights. And that comes out of Hebrews chapter 12, verse is one and two. That's right, we have to tithe our time, Stephanie, you are so right. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, it says, um, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We will do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Y'all, so we have got to... Um, strip off the weights the things that are holding us back from spending from from spending time from with him you know those competing voices what are the competing voices that are in your life i know what the competing voices are in my life and yes i'm trying to shave off some of those areas and shave back some of those things um to hear god's voice you have to turn down the volume of the world in order to hear his voice we have to turn down the volume of the world and then the next thing, the next weapon is just simply having an unprepared heart. He speaks to us, but our heart is not ready to receive. And that, I'm going to, um, uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 23. It's actually verses 19 through 23, but this is, this is the parable of the reaper and the sower, where you sow your seed you, on the rocky path, the fertile soil, or in the, um, what was the briar patch stickers, whatever it was called. So I'm not going to read all the scripture, but I am going to read the last one, Matthew 19, 23. It says, The seed that fell on good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word and produced a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times as much has been planted. So we have to have a prepared heart, just like the soil had to be prepared for the, when the seed falls so we can receive it it can be planted and it can and it can reproduce if our hearts are so busy with if our hearts are full of busyness and competing voices then the soil our heart is not prepared to receive so we have to when we start shaving back that busyness and we start shaving back that un, um, those competing voices then our hearts are starting to be more prepared to hear his voice you know God comes to a prepared environment um, so, we, how many of us, I do this all the time, y'all, and I told y'all this, I am so guilty of this. I can tune anything out. I mean, anything. 
yesterday I was sitting at the table I was sitting at one of the table and Mark was sitting at the other and he was working on some of his schoolwork and I was reading a book and I was um, taking some notes from the book and Noah was sitting on the side of the table and he had a little car and he was just ying, 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 back and forth with the car I totally tuned that out Mark was like Noah can you go to another room and play daddy's trying to do all his schoolwork and this this conversation went on for a couple of minutes and um Ying, 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 ying. And I was reading my book, and I just totally had tuned that out. I, I think, um, and I, I, I am so good at tuning out kids. My, I mean, my husband, anything that's around me. If I've got my mind on one thing, I can tune out everything else that's around me. Y'all, I think we do that to God sometimes. We are so busy doing our thing that when he's speaking we've just tuned him out because his voice has gotten lost in and whatever's going on around us like little noah yesterday with that little car hanging back and forth i just totally tuned that out and i was just doing what i was doing i think we do that to god sometimes we just get so busy doing what we're doing that he's over here ying, 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 hey hey you know and that's what noah was doing he wanted our attention yesterday oh, he wanted our attention yesterday and, um, and so he was, <laughs> yeah, I hear you, Stephanie. <laughs> so I can so do that. But that's what Noah was doing. He wanted our undivided attention. So in order to get our undivided attention, he had his little car and he was making this noise to try to distract us onto him. Well, he got his daddy's undivided attention because they just got up and went to another room. <laughs> but I was just like, but anyway, so we've learned um, to tune God out, just like we've, we tune out our children, tune out everything else around us. But, um, and this is where I'm gonna get to the next. Now I'm gonna talk about three things. I've talked about three things that um, cause us not to hear his voice. And now I wanna share with you three things that will help us to be prepared and to hear his voice. So, um, and we've been talking about Eli a lot here lately, y'all. So God must be trying to talk to us about Eli. But I'm gonna be going from 1 Samuel chapter three. Um, and this is the story of verses 1 through 11. And for the sake of time, I won't read the whole 1 through 11, but I'll just kind of paraphrase it for you. But I do challenge you to go back and read it for yourself. But here, um, we know Eli was old, and um, Samuel was his little helper guy, like his little servant, I guess, his helper. And um, Samuel couldn't hear well, but they were saying, let me read, I do want to read verse 3. 3, 3, it says, The lamp of God had not gone out, and Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. So Samuel was asleep in the church, in the tabernacle near by the lamp near the ark of the covenant. So, and he kept hearing somebody call his name, so he would get up. Samuel would hear somebody call his name, so he'd get up and he'd go to Eli. And Eli was like, nope, I hadn't called your name. So Samuel would go back to bed. He heard again, so he got up. So he got up the third time. And he said to Eli, did you call me? And um, Eli said no, but then Eli realized, hey, I think God's trying to speak to him. So Eli told him, he said, okay, this time, if you hear the voice again, I want you to say to the voice, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Y'all, I think that's just what we need to do to God sometimes. We just need to say, speak, Lord, I'm listening. But I want you to think about verse 3 where I just read where was Samuel when God started to speak to him he was near the lamp and a lamp represents the Word of God um, in Psalm 119 it says that his word is a light into our path and a lamp into our feet so we need to be near the lamp we need to be near the word we need to be in the word the lamp y'all spend time in the word every day y'all if it's just reading one or two scriptures a day the Bible app is awesome. You can get a scripture of day. They'll send it to you. They'll give you a little reminder to go read it. There's so many, uh, you know, pick up your actual Bible and read it. I promise you, you want to read a love story, there's one in here. You want to read a story about a battle, there's a bunch of them in here. I mean, there's so much in the Word of God. And spend time in the Word. And I'm preaching to the choir because I, a lot of times I don't really get to, like, read it to be reading it. I mean, like, I'll read it, but I'm, like, just reading it. So, you know, that's a thing that I need to work on myself is when I read the Word, to spend time in the Word. So, be near the lamp. Spend time in the Word. That's the first thing is to read His Word. And secondly, it says that Samuel 
was near the Ark of the Covenant. And if you know anything about the Old Testament, the Ark of the Covenant was literally the presence of God that went everywhere. It was a cloud by day and a fire by night. So Samuel was near the presence of God. So in order to hear him, we have to stay, <clears throat> we have to be near the presence of God. And how do you be near the presence of God? Y'all, worship is the most incredible thing. <clears throat> God's presence is always with us. I'm not saying that, but if you, I'm telling you, if you have a bad day, if you're just in the middle of a funk and you're just feeling it, if you will turn on some incredible worship music, an old hymn, whatever, whatever you like to listen to to worship, whatever your worship mode is, and maybe if it's just you singing to the top of your lungs in the shower by yourself, but when you get in that mode of worship, you are really getting near the presence of God, y'all. And when you get it, I, I can change my attitude just like that, simply by turning on some worship music and cranking it up. The presence of God changes everything, y'all. So stay in the Word. Be near the presence of, of God. You know, God is attracted to worship. He tells us that time and time again. And then the next thing was, is where was he? He was in the tabernacle. Y'all, it is so important to be planted with a body of believers. Find a church. Get plugged in. If you don't have a church, reach out to me. Even where, No matter where you are in the, in the United States, I will help you find a good Bible-believing, faith-based church. You need to find your... You need to be in... The, you need to be planted with like-minded people. You need to be involved. Brave and Beautiful Moments is wonderful. It's an awesome avenue for women to come together, to support, to encourage each other. But we ain't your church. We are not your church. I'm sorry. And if you're using us for a church, please don't. We are just we are just an extension of the big church, okay? The church. The body of Christ. But find your get get planted somewhere. Get in, in, in the body of Christ, be in the tabernacle, be in the church, and and that is so important, y'all. There's scripture that that tells you that, you know, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves, and that that is important. So, read His Word, stay in His presence, and go to church. I mean, those are ways that will help you, that cultivates the heart, that helps to prepare the heart to hear Him when He speaks to you. He'll speak to you through His Word, through the written Word. He'll speak to you through other people. He'll speak to you in that still, small voice, that little whisper. And so many times, y'all say, oh, my intuition, or, oh, that still, small, you know, y'all, I, I, get, I get tickled sometimes. I'm like, that ain't your intuition. That's the Holy Spirit. That's God speaking to you, you know. But, you know, some people, they just don't want to call it that. Or, and sometimes, you know, when you just have that gut feeling, okay, y'all, that gut feeling, a lot of times, if it's, I'm just telling you, God ain't going to tell you to do anything that don't line up with his word, okay? If it lines up with his word, he's not going to go tell you to rob a bank. He might go tell you to bless a homeless person. He might go tell you to go buy somebody's lunch, but he ain't going to tell you to rob a bank, okay? So, y'all know what I'm saying. If you want to hear God's voice, let's get rid of the busyness. Cancel out those other voices, spend time with him, read his word, stay in his presence, and get plugged in with a body of believers. So God still speaks and he he wants to he wants how much as my children get older, y'all, and I can relate this right now, as my children get older, I long for them to just want to come and just sit down and talk to me. I because the older they get, the busier they get, the more voices that they're hearing from other people, other things. So when they want to come and sit down with me and spend time with me, I'm just like, I'll just, I just want to drop everything I'm doing just to spend time with them. Y'all, God is just like that with us. He just, he just longs for us to want to spend time with him and to, and he wants to communicate with us. It's not a one way street. If my kids sat down and all they did was talk and I never responded back to them. They never want to talk to me again. God is just like that with us, y'all. He is responding back to us. We just have to be still long enough to listen to him. So, um, again, don't forget about your secret sister. Um, we're going to have a birthday giveaway coming up for Brave and Beautiful Mamas. Be in prayer for the Hatch family. And I will keep y'all updated or have one of the sisters let us know what's going on with them. And um, let me pray again. 
Good morning, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you are still a talking God. You still talk, Lord, and we just need to cultivate our hearts to be prepared to hear you when you speak, Lord. And um, thank you for showing me and reminding me of areas in my life that I need to work on so I can clearly hear your voice, Lord, and know that when you're speaking, you're speaking, Lord. So I just ask that you just help me to have that prepared heart, Lord, that fertile soil. And Lord, for um, all the brave and beautiful mamas, Lord, the areas in their life that they're working on, Lord, that you would encourage them, that you would put people in their life to come alongside them, to encourage them, to strengthen them, to help them to be even accountable, Lord, um, in areas. Lord, I thank you for that. Lord, I just ask that you just bless us this Wednesday. Lord, this is Warfare Wednesday. We lift up all the requests that um, have been written out this week. You know them on our hearts and our lives, Lord. So we just lift all this up to you right now, Lord. And again, we thank you for this day, Lord. And I just ask that you just bless each and every one of us. It's in your precious and holy name that we pray. Amen. All right, guys, I love y'all. Um, be blessed. Have a great Wednesday and we'll see you back on Friday.